without further ado, we've got our our interview. I've got the interview. We've got the interview. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I just want to introduce you to the lovely Hazel from Rag and Bow. Hello, Hazel. Hello, hello. Good to be here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you guys, if you knew what she'd done to get here, <laughs> honestly, I feel like I owe her a bottle of Cristal or something, seriously, because she's been waiting for me. <laughs> it's all worth it, people. Oh, it's all worth it. I've been on my frigging fashionista time zone again. <laughs> That's what it's been. So, Hazel, thank you so much for coming. And I basically want people out there to start and hear your story from scratch, from mm-hmm. the beginning. So I'm going to take it back. Let's take it back. And you tell me who who is Hazel, who who are you? Well, well, how long have you got? I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, I am somebody who's always been really passionate about fashion yeah. from like a really, really young age. Um, I've got um, a mum who's from Grenada yeah. and uh, a dad who's English. And really, my passion started from my mum's wardrobe um, and she just has basically curated this whole collection of vintage clothing. Wow. Um, but I think I think the thing that really struck me was that like I wasn't allowed to look at it. Yeah, <laughs> I it's wasn't, so beautiful. Yeah, I wasn't allowed. Look, but don't yeah, touch. Exactly. And anyone who knows me will tell you if there's a button that says don't touch this, I'm like, oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no button. <laughs> um, so it was more like, oh, I've got to, you know, delve into here and find out what, what this is all about. Um, but yeah, just always had an interest in fashion, but I haven't always kind of worked in it. Yeah. Um, and I think it was something it's something that definitely like grew with age. And... So where did you start off? You're saying you've not always worked in fashion. Yeah. Where were you kind of, what was your first well, I start, calling card? I started, basically I've always loved art, yeah. nearly did like an, an art foundation and yeah. possibly would have gone on to fine art. Um, but then it was kind of around the time of those of you who are young enough to remember the Karen Franklin and Jeff Bank era of clothes show. Oh yeah, uh, oh my God. And uh, I so wanted to uh, be the presenter uh, of that show. <laughs> I just loved it. And seeing that was just such an inspiration to me. And people often say, oh, you know, what, you know, do you, did you want to work in fashion because of all the parties and all, you know, all that kind of side? It really wasn't. It was just the pure artistry. Mm. artistry of what I was seeing mm. um but I really wanted to work in fashion PR when I was right. like okay probably when I was doing my A-levels that's what I really wanted to do and then that quickly went when I started university and did work experience uh, <laughs> I was yeah, like I can feel that as yeah. well mm-hmm. I was like don't want to do this um and then it was really weird I just I graduated in um fashion promotion from London College of Fashion so that was great because it was broadcast journalism and PR yeah um got lots of work experience um but then fell into music it Ah. was really weird it was kind of one of those stories where if I wanted to do what I did in music it I probably would have really struggled you know what I mean that really annoying thing is like you just fell into it who have you worked with in the music industry uh well I had um I was with Keith Flint from yeah Firestarter oh help hate hate me saying that um for like two (laughs) years as his personal manager okay great yeah, so amazing I, so I worked that was like amazing but before that uh I worked in artist management and before that I worked for a big company called Dun and Dusted who produced like amazing huge televised music events so wow. yeah so, so from music to <laughs> fashion yes yeah I and mean, then this is what I think everyone's wanting to hear and uh, all the lovers of the vintage yeah. scene at the moment we thank you oh. Hazel for bringing in <laughs> for bringing rag and bow into our lives bow to you we bow to you she is on the floor <laughs> yes she is <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so tell us, what is Rag and Bow and how did it get started? So basically, um, I really wanted, I kind of got to that stage in my career where it's either I'm going to be a producer or I'm going to do something else. Um, and I've always been passionate about vintage. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it a go. I'm always kind of full of belief if you, if you feel strong enough about something that, you know, it's probably just fear that's holding you back. Mm. A lot of the time you can do it. Um so I was just like, right, I don't want to be a shop. It was at the height of the recession. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to have all those, immediately don't want to have all those overheads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to do something that would really kind of capture the imagination of the mm. customer. I kind of worked backwards from, you know, the marketing point of view of the business. Yeah. And then kind of I knew the selecting of the clothes would be the easiest yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, I th- you know, I thought it just has to really kind of like connect with people. 
And then I thought, well, if I'm kind of like on the move and not just on the move, I'm doing markets. I'm on the move, like producing my own events, yeah. doing pop-ups. Um, that would be a, a kind of more interesting angle of starting it. Um, and then the, the name was quite organic from that. So it's Rag and Bow. But again, um, I don't know, a lot of people may not remember this, but there used to be people called the Rag and Bone Man who uh, um, yeah. Yeah, used to come round. Uh, and actually, in my parent, where my parents lived, they used to do that. Mm, and they yes. had a big bell. And actually, I went to the dentist back home about, when was it, about six months ago, and there was one there. Really? But he had a megaphone. Oh and I was like, oh my goodness, it was crazy. That's so crazy. So, yeah, it was really crazy. It was like divine intervention. It's like, <laughs> oh, I've seen a Rag and Bone Man. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just thought that all well, if I that I really like that concept. Obviously, he trawled the streets looking for things, yeah. that, you know, people's old things that people wanted to sell on. And I sort of make it a bit more kind of girly and make it like Rag and Bow. Yeah. So I'm still I'm because I'm you know I'm Rag and Bow the roaming vintage store. So it all kind of tied in. And yeah. once I kind of got the name locked down. Um, and then a really good um, friend of mine who's really talented called Stuart Gardner, who designs uh, amazing products that are sold like in Conran Shop and wow. SCP. But we were starting off at the same time, yeah. launching our own businesses. So like he did my logo and, and ever since then, it's kind of just like erupted into this really clear it brand. It has absolutely exploded for uh, you. It's and it's been absolutely amazing. such an amazing journey for you. And just <clears throat> looking at everything you've achieved, it's been phenomenal. This year alone, I mean, Selfridges. Talk to us about Selfridges. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, basically, there's uh, a company called Supermarket Sarah, yeah. run by Sarah Bagner, who I have been a fan of since she began. Yeah. Um, she does something really, really interesting where she basically curates a wall. Mm -hmm. So for people at home, it's like, say you have a wall in your house and she would put like amazing dresses up there, bit, bits of kitsch ceramic, just yeah. basically create almost like a stage set. Yeah. Um, photograph it put it online then you can buy everything from it Amazing. yeah it's really really great um and then she i met her actually at um a part of 100 percent design she was doing a thing at uh at a design studio a little pop-up um and we met and then we just were talking and yeah she and then we kind of you know i did a wall for her and then she was um curating a wall for selfridges and would and asked me whether I wanted to um, be the vintage uh, stockist. And I was like, wow. yeah, jumped at it. And um, it was just great. It wasn't just being in a department store. It's the way that she, she did it as well, yeah, which really, was, really interested me. It was fantastic. Me. Yeah. I, hope, I hope everyone checked it out and can check it out because it's just really, really cool. So cool how everything's all <clears> framed and just... It just looks like art, basically, yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's so beautiful. Aesthetically pleasing, yes. as one would say. <laughs> so apart from Selfridges, mm. what else can we expect from the Rag & Bow Roaming Vintage Store? Well, some... This year and coming, and, and going coming. forward? Um, just kind of getting bigger, really. Yeah. Um, going to be getting some new people on board, expanding the team. Fantastic. Which will be really great. It just means that we'll be able to do more events and yeah. go, go a bit further. And, yeah. Um, so that, that'll be fantastic. Um, also launching online tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, with ASOS as woo, a... Woo. Yay. Woo. Well done. <laughs> um, so as a, good. As a vintage boutique. So that, that'll be great. And then mm. we'll just kind of hopefully the rest of the year will be building on that and um so yeah just trying to get get our our collections to as many people as possible yeah. so yeah that's awesome mm. so anyone who can't make it to any of your roaming fairs yes. can always log on to ASOS so search for rag and bow yes. <laughs> and purchase, purchase 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 yeah. purchase away <laughs> so also I know for a fact that you're dying to tell me i've got i can see your little script from here <laughs> there's something else happening soon yes. next month yes uh, alongside the royal wedding yes yes so basically um what i'm doing with uh judy's affordable vintage fair uh is we are putting on a street party with the book club which is going to mean that the whole of leonard street for you those of you who don't know, which is just off Great Eastern Street, is going to be shut down for the Royal Wedding. You hear that? Can yeah. we just repeat that? Yeah, it'll be shut East down. London. <laughs> East London, street party, Shortish Radio, exclusive, <laughs> shut down, Leonard Street, April the 29th. <laughs> that was my horn sound. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> exclusive, exclusive here on Shoreditch Radio. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just going to be like an amazing day, as I said, with the book club, uh, a kind of like curating it with us. And uh, we'll have the, the vintage fair, but then there'll be big screens so you won't miss anything. There'll be drink stalls. Obviously, the uh, book club will be open and selling all kinds of um, drinks and f- there'll be food from local people. So oh, it's, it's very, very community based. Sounds so. like my thing. Yeah. Food, drink, vintage clothing. <laughs> Done. <laughs> what else do you need? Eh? Exactly. What else do you need? Oh, and the next day. <laughs> Is another Van holiday. Yeah, exactly. So you sleep exactly. it off. Oh, and and after the street party, they're having a kind of like whole evening of stuff that's going on. Oh, so fantastic. for you late night people, for people who uh, can keep it together, unlike myself <laughs> after a couple of drinks, I tell you, I'm absolutely useless. <laughs> so that is amazing. We've got so much happening. You've got so much going on. What else is there that we can expect that I haven't touched on? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, well, for those of you who may know that I do a monthly event at Paradise, uh, Paradise by way of Kensal Green. Um, and then we've also got, um, I sponsor the Bethnal Green Affordable Vintage Fair. Yay! Uh, you, Ooh, you know that, the locals, <laughs> that amazing vintage fair in Bethnal Green. This is the lady. This is the brain. Here I am. Here I am. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're bringing that back May the 22nd. So that's Sunday, May the 22nd. So we're really excited about oh that. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so great. Yeah. Honestly, amazing. Yeah. So much. So much. Yeah, just, you know, a few things. Just a little bit busy. Yeah, slightly <laughs> busy, yeah? Slightly busy. And more coming next year. I really hope so. Because yes. it's been a pleasure talking to you. Oh, it really thank you has, very much. Hazel. Thank you. And anyone out there who has a dream and really wants to go for it, Hazel is a huge, huge, hugely, huge inspiration. Oh. It just proves that if you really want it, go out do it and it can be done so if you wanted to find out a bit more about me or check out our marvellous blog um, then you can go to www.ragandbow.com so thank you my lovely thank you for coming on to the show thank you very much